Hey guys, it's Sarah. Today's video is going to be about periods, so if you don't like hearing about periods, this may just not be the video for you. But I'm going to be trying out the Salt Soft Menstrual Cup. This will be my first time trying it. I'm going to be starting my period any minute now. <laughs> so I wanted to take you along the journey of trying this out and seeing how it works for me. This is not my first rodeo with menstrual cups. Towards the beginning of 2019, I did a video talking about my experience with a bunch of different reusable period products, which included the Diva Cup, cloth pads, and Thinks period panties. And so if you want to hear a ton of information on my experience with all those things, I'll make sure to have that video linked below and also up in the eye. But if you watched that video, you know that my experience with the Diva Cup was not great. <laughs> I tried to make that thing work for me for three years. The reason I had so much trouble with the Diva Cup and why I just don't think it was a good fit for me is because it was nearly impossible for me to get it to actually completely open up. Once you insert it, you have to actually make sure that it pops open and it's completely opened up like this so that it can create a seal around your cervix. That way it actually collects all the blood and you don't get any leakage. My issue with the Diva Cup was that I think mostly due to the size of the cup and just the way that I am anatomically, I'm a very petite individual and I think the Diva Cup was just too big for me. There were a few times where I thought I had it in there right, but I think that it was still not quite completely open. So because of that, I would almost always get leakage with it, which for me it's like, what's the point, you know? But the reason why I wanted to go back and try to make a cup work for me again is because there's a lot of really appealing things about it. Number one is that you can actually leave it in for up to 12 hours. It's not like a tampon where you run the risk of getting uh, toxic shock syndrome if you leave it in for more than, what is it, eight hours. There's no risk of that with uh, menstrual cups as far as I'm aware so you don't even have to really think about it throughout the day but that's something that you could never experience using pads or tampons because those you have to change every few hours so it's like constantly on your mind you know so that's the main that's the main reason why I I kind of wanted to try again and so many people who have found a cup that they love will just rave about it and say it's like the best thing ever and so I kind of want to I kind of want to know what it's like to have a cup that really works well with my body. So the reason why I ended up choosing the salt cup is because I'd heard a lot about this brand already, but I also took, there's this amazing resource called Put a Cup in It. They have a website, um, like a Facebook group, I think, but on their website, they have a quiz you can take, um, whether you, you've used cups in the past or not. And it will actually give you a few guesses as to which brands of cups might work best for you. And you would be surprised how many different brands there are. There are so many. They even have like a chart on their website of probably just about every brand of cup you could think of. And it ranks each one based on like the firmness, the size, the diameter, all like so many different factors. So they go really in depth, it's really cool. So I took that quiz and lo and behold, the Diva Cup was not one of the results I got as a cup that might work for me, so <laughs> that makes sense. The results I got were the Lunette Size 1, the Lena Cup, the Salt Cup, and the Ruby Cup. And I had just heard so many good things about the Salt Cup that I, that's why I decided to go with that one. I saw that they had a few different sizes and also levels of softness that they offered, so I ended up choosing the size small in the soft version. They also have a regular size, but I wanted to get the soft because another issue I had with the Diva Cup was that after a couple days of using it and you know removing it, reinserting it over and over again, it started to feel really uncomfortable to remove. I think because it's kind of a stiffer material, so I felt like a softer material might just be more of a pleasant experience to use for me. That is how I arrived at the Salt Soft Cup. They say that this small version is meant to hold three tampons worth of blood, which is kind of amazing to me. Because you, you look at this and think, well, it's not that much bigger than a tampon. How could it possibly hold that much? But it's pretty cool. And then it says it's for a light to normal flow. It could also be good for a first time user and pre-birth. So anyway, I, I'm really excited to test this out. I actually will go ahead and tell you, I already did a little trial run of putting this in to see if I could actually get it to open up all the way. And I think it, I think I actually did 
get it in there properly. This video is basically just gonna be me throughout my period giving you updates on how this is working for me. I guess it'll be it'll be kind of an informal vlog style video, but I just wanted to give you some information going into it in this intro. So just to give you a little bit of background on my periods so that you can know how my experience might compare to yours. I do have relatively light periods. I would say back when I did use tampons, I would pretty much only use regular and light tampons. I never used the super ones. I do have a heavier-ish day usually on day two. Day one will be kind of medium. Day two will be a little bit heavier, at least for me. Still not super heavy. And then days like three, four, and five are very light. So that's another reason why I think this the small size is probably going to be you know, just fine for me because I don't have a heavy flow anyway. I will go ahead and say it does feel to me not, it's not so soft that it's like flimsy or anything like that. It still has some good structure to it, but it does feel just a little bit softer than the Diva Cup. Um, it also, it's a little bit more bulbous, I think, and it definitely is smaller. So I also really like that the stem here is actually, it's not completely round, it's kind of pinched in. So I feel like it'll be easy to kind of grab onto it. It has a few little ridges to help with, you know, gripping it. Um, there's a few ridges also at the bottom of the cup because when you do remove it, you have to actually pinch it in to break the seal and then remove. You can't just pull down on the uh, stem. When you get it, it comes in this adorable cylinder. I do have to say I really appreciate the way that all of this is packaged. It's almost completely plastic free except for maybe this little window up here but it came in very minimal cardboard packaging so I love that and it's just kind of in there and you can actually the way that you remove this is similar to the way that you would remove it from your own body but you just pinch it pull it out and there it is. I have to give them a 10 out of 10 for their branding and packaging. So much prettier and just more appealing than the Diva Cups branding. It also comes with this adorable little pouch which is super pretty that you can use to carry your cup when you're not using it. And then it also of course came with some instructions and another little informational pamphlet. When I bought it, um, I bought it directly from their website, they were having a little deal where you could get, um, if you bought the cup, you would get the salt cup wash for free with it. So I think that's all I have to say for this intro portion of the video but um, I'm just gonna wait for my period to start and then I'll just kind of hop on and give you some updates on how it's going along the way. Hey guys, it is the next day. My period officially started this morning. Um, it usually starts out pretty light, but I went ahead and put the cup in. I'm also wearing some of my Thinks underwear, which I love Thinks, by the way, they're amazing. I actually was able to get the cup in really easily. I feel like my body just accepts it better than the Diva Cup, like it seems to just fit better and I felt it, I, I used the C-fold. Once I had it up there, it kind of, I just felt it pop open, which is kind of what's supposed to happen, which I never experienced with the Diva Cup. So, um, and then just to make sure, I always kind of run my finger around it and it still felt like there was a little bit of like a dip in the side, like a little curve in the side. So I kind of just like ran my finger around it and then waited a little while and then I sort of felt it create that seal, which feels kind of weird if you've ever felt that, but I think it really is properly in there. Hey guys, so it's day two and yesterday went really well. My flow overall was really light yesterday, so I didn't have any leaking. I was able to leave the cup in Let's see, I, my, when I checked in with you guys yesterday, it was around 11 in the morning, and I left it until about 9.30 at night when I took it out. There was only like this much in there, but there was nothing on the outside of the cup, which led me to believe that you know, it was really securely suctioned and, you know, there was no leakage. I have a feeling today my flow will be a little bit heavier because usually it's day two is like my heaviest day. This morning I took it out and changed it around 9.30 again. So it was in for 12 hours. There was not a ton of blood in there. Um, again, like maybe that much. I was able to, again, get it in really easily. I didn't feel it pop open on its own, but I actually heard a tip on the Put A Cup In It YouTube channel where they said if you're having a hard time getting it to open, if you run your finger around it and actually, um, if you can feel where it's still folded, sort of push outward a little bit, 
right there to create room for the cup to open fully. And I did that and it actually worked really well. So then, you know, I ran my finger around again and I, it, I could tell that it was actually completely round, you know, completely open. There were no folds in it or anything. So a couple hours later, I went pee. I did notice there was a little bit of blood on the toilet paper. So that's the first time that's happened. And um, so I was kind of like, okay, maybe I need to check and make sure it's still in there properly and i felt around and it felt perfectly like it had before completely round and open so i'm thinking what happened which this seems like kind of something that you can't really avoid but when you take it out and reinsert there there's always the chance that there's just some residual blood left underneath the cup and so I think that may have been what that was, which is why I think it's important to wear some sort of backup, whether it's a liner or a cloth pad or like a Thinx or other kind of period underwear. That way, you know, in case there is any residual blood, it'll be taken care of that way. So anyway, I was a little disappointed to see that, but I don't think it's actually actively leaking. I don't feel it flowing out of me like I did often with the Diva Cup. So I'm thinking it's just, you know, residual blood, which is totally, normal and um, I think that the cup is still doing its job. So anyway, it's been in since around 9.30 or 10 this morning. So I'm going to try to leave it in for a full 12 hours, um, which is, I, I guess yesterday I left it in for like 10 hours, so not quite the full 12. But then last night it was in for a full 12 hours and I had no leaking whatsoever. So I'm thinking today will be the true test because it is my heaviest day. Hey guys, so it is day three now. I do have quite a few updates on how yesterday went. So yesterday was my heaviest day like it normally is. And I think I had told you yesterday, I noticed like a little bit of very slight leaking in the morning um, within like a couple hours after I put it in that I assumed to be and I still think was kind of just residual blood that was sort of left outside after I'd put the Diva Cup, or not the Diva Cup, after I'd put the cup in. I did double check when I'd noticed the first little tiny bit of leaking to make sure that it was still opened up all the way and in there properly, and I concluded that it was in there properly. So as the day went on, I kept noticing a little bit of leaking here and there, um, but I was wearing my Thinks. I was out and about most of the day yesterday, and towards the evening time after the cup had been in for probably nine hours around there. I was noticing even more leaking that did not look like just residual blood. It looked more like fresh blood. I know this is TMI, but hey, that's the whole point of this video. So I, like I said, I was in public at that time. I wasn't super worried about it. Like the cup was still in, it felt comfortable, but um, I wanted to wait until I got home to deal with it. So I was like, when I get home, I'll check and see if maybe it shifted or, you know, the seal broke or something. When I got home, Around the 12 hour mark, I took it out and um, I made the mistake of not doing that over the toilet. I was kind of just standing in my bathroom and as I took the cup out, it must have tilted a little bit. And this has never happened to me before, but it started spilling everywhere, like all over the floor, <laughs> which I was not expecting that to happen because like I've said many times, my flow is pretty light. Even on my heavy days, I would say it's more like a medium flow. I was just really surprised <laughs> that that happened, but of course that was really my bad. Like I should have I should have done it over the toilet like I normally do, but I just wasn't thinking. So that was a whole mess to clean up, which was so fun. I, I guess it that may have been why it was leaking towards the end of the night because yeah, it may have actually overflowed just a tiny bit. So maybe on my heavy day, my day two, I just need to probably only leave it in for a maximum of like eight hours before I empty it and reinsert. So that was a learning experience, <laughs> um, not a huge deal. When I went to take it out, I did check to see, you know, is it is it in there properly? Is it still, you know, is the seal still there? And it definitely felt like it was completely opened up and, you know, in the right place and everything. So I don't think it was an issue of it being you know, not fully open or I don't think it had like turned sideways in me or anything like that. Like I think it was in there just fine. I think it had just pretty much filled up. That was a mistake. <laughs> Let that be a reminder to you. If you're still getting the hang of a cup, make sure that you're over a toilet when you're removing it. I don't want to scare people off though because that's never happened to me before. <laughs> I should have just been more aware. Another great place to, to do that is in the shower, especially if you're new to it. Um, cause that way you don't have to worry about making a mess, but 
I've still been having a really easy time inserting it and removing it. When I insert it, I pretty much feel it pop open right away. So it's very easy. My body just seems to accept it <laughs> much more readily than it did the Diva Cup. So I'm still loving it. It's been really comfortable. I can't tell it's there throughout the day. I'll probably will be able to leave it in for 12 hours today with no problem. Today, I'm also gonna go to the gym. I'm gonna go to like an ab workout class. So that way I'll be able to test it, see how it does during a workout. I'm not expecting it to cause any issues at all, but we will see. Um, and maybe I'll report back again tonight, let you know how that went. All right guys, gym was a success. I couldn't feel it at all, totally. Couldn't even tell it was there. No leaking beyond just like that little bit of spotting that I've been having, but I did just empty out the cup. It hasn't been a full 12 hours. I had had it in for about nine hours um, and there wasn't that much in there. Again, like probably that much. Yeah, we're towards the end of day three, which means I'll probably have like another one or two days. It'll probably be pretty much over by the end of tomorrow. One thing I will note that I really appreciate is you know as i've inserted it and removed it and reinserted it you know several times since my period started it's been i it hasn't become uncomfortable to do that i still feel like it i can get it in and out easily without it kind of hurting all right guys i am here to give you some final thoughts so i made it through my period Hallelujah. I just wanted to kind of wrap up and let you know what I'm thinking now that I made it through a whole period with the Salt Soft Cup. I wore this for days one through day four, and then for me day five was just, it's usually just very, very light spotting. So I didn't end up wearing this on the last day. I just wore some of my Finx underwear. I love it. I love it. I will absolutely be continuing to use it. The thing that makes cups so great is that they're very easy to clean. All you need is like a mild, Oil-free soap, I think, is what they say. I will probably be boiling this before my next period just to get it nice and sanitized. They do say you can do that. At one point in time, I was wearing Thinks alone, at least um, throughout the majority of my period. And those work if you have a light flow. It's fine to like free bleed into those. And you're, you, there's really, I've never had any leaking. On medium to light flow days, those are great. The thing is, the more cycles I wore them through, I would have to spend a lot of time like scrubbing them with a bar of like Dr. Bronner's soap or something. And if I'm not, if I'm just using them as a backup, I don't have to do that. So I know, basically I noticed that there was actually quite a bit of buildup that I didn't realize a few months into using them over and over again when I used them that way. So that's kind of the main reason why I wanted to get back into using a menstrual cup and just using the things as a backup. That way I don't have to spend nearly as much time during my period cleaning things and I can leave it in for like 10 to 12 hours without having to worry about it. So it's almost like you don't even remember that you're on your period a lot of the time because you don't even have to think about it. Whereas when you're using pads or tampons, you're always saying like, ooh, do I need to change my tampon? Because you have to change tampons every like, what, three to six hours most of the time. So it's just so much easier to just be able to put this in and forget about it for like the majority of your day. Big takeaways for me were that I was actually surprised by how easily this was able, I almost just threw this into my tea. <laughs> I was surprised by how easily I was able to get this to open up when I inserted it. I was afraid because I'd heard that the softer the cup, the harder it might be to get it to pop open once it's inside. But I actually found this easier to pop open than the Diva Cup, more than likely because of the size. I mean, do you see the difference here? I didn't have any discomfort with this. Um, every time I inserted it, I except for the first couple of times I was still trying to figure it out. I didn't have any trouble getting this to open up at all. I didn't feel it shifting around inside me at all. It stayed in place really well despite being a little bit smaller. Another thing I was afraid of was that it might go too high up because it is a little bit shorter than other cups. I was afraid I might not be able to find it when it came time to remove it. But the stem is pretty long so I was always able to find the stem and then I could sort of guide my fingers up. Now, I will say I did have to reach up further to get this out than I did with this. So that's one thing about cups, is you just have to be more comfortable. You're gonna have to learn, if you aren't already, to be more comfortable with your body and, you know, 
you're gonna have to use your hands a lot more with these kinds of things than you would with a tampon that has an applicator, you know? But I didn't find the stem to be uncomfortable at all. I did not feel it at all once it was inside. And I actually feel like this stem is much softer than the Diva one. The Diva one has these ridges, which never bothered me, but I could see how this might be uncomfortable for someone because it's kind of a rough, ridgy texture, whereas this one is very soft. The only thing is on my day two, which is my heavy day, I, I guess what I learned is that I can't leave this in for the full 12 hours, but I think nine to 10 hours would be totally fine. So not a huge deal. Maybe I'd look into trying the regular size for my heavy, my one heavy day, but I don't really feel like it's necessary to get another cup just for that one day when I could just change this slightly more frequently that day. I'm so excited to have found one that works for me. I think it just goes to show that if you try a cup that doesn't work for you, sometimes it just takes a couple of tries to find the one that's right for you. There are tons of people that love the Diva Cup, so I'm not saying that just because it didn't work for me, it's not going to work for you. But if you've tried cups in the past that were perhaps a little bit too big for you, this one might be a really good one to try. Or if you tried cups that were that felt a little too firm or uncomfortable for you, this soft cup is so much better than the Diva Cup. I think there's something for everyone out there and I would really highly recommend, if you've never tried a cup before, you don't even know where to start, check out the Put a Cup in It quiz. The first time I took it, I got a kind of confusing answer that I didn't really feel like matched me or like what, what I needed. But then I took it again, I think I put a little bit more thought into my answers and I got an answer that made more sense for me. So you may need to take it a couple times to just kind of get the hang of the questions because some of them it's like you could go either way. But I did find that really helpful and I feel like they were absolutely right in recommending the salt cup to me. And I, I really like the wash that came with it too. I feel like it works really well. I did ask you guys on Instagram if you had any questions for me about the salt cup. I'm gonna check in. I feel like I've pretty much covered most of them but I'm gonna double check and see if there's anything that I wanted to mention. One person asked if I felt the need to trim the stem. I do not feel the need to trim the stem. In fact, I like that the stem is there and I like that it's this long because just in case the cup does kind of shift upward a little bit, it's very easy for me to find it and it just gives me peace of mind. <laughs> So I won't be trimming my stem, but you could. I would recommend trying it with the stem first before you decide to trim it though, just to be sure. I don't think I would even need to because it's not uncomfortable anyway. Is it uncomfortable when you sit down or get up? No, I didn't. I couldn't feel it at all once it was inside me. Did you experience any pain when first trying to insert or remove? No, nope. and I would attribute that to the smaller size and the softer material because occasionally I did have pain with the Diva Cup, especially by like day three of my period. Um, it just got to be uncomfortable after a couple days. Does it slide down? No, I didn't have any issues with it sliding down or up or sideways or anything. Does it wash easily? Yes. How long is the stem? I would say that the stem is maybe about three quarters of an inch. Um, I don't know if that's an exact measurement, but you can see how it compares to the Diva Cup stem. It's a little different. It is longer, but also a nicer material. <laughs> is there a huge learning curve? I would say there is a learning curve, but if you have a cup that works well with your body, I, I would say the lear learning curve is probably gonna be easier. For me with the Diva Cup, there was a huge lear learning curve that I never quite got over, <laughs> but I didn't have that problem with. Now, I was already familiar with cups when I tried the salt though, so that probably helped. I'm afraid to try one because of my IUD, afraid it will cause the strings to move or something. I don't know, I don't have an IUD, I would check with your doctor on that. I've heard that I've heard that you can use it with an IUD and I've heard that you shouldn't, so yeah, check with your doctor. How often do you have to change it? My main concern is changing it in a public place. You should be able to leave it in for 12 hours. If all goes well, you shouldn't have to change it in a public place at all, which is the really nice thing about cups. But just in case you did have to change it in a public place, if you're using a public restroom that has stalls, I personally would not feel comfortable going out of the stall to the sink to rinse it out. I just wouldn't be. So if you can find like a private restroom, like a one-seater kind of restroom with its own sink and everything, that would be ideal. Or if there's a handicap stall that has its own sink, that would also be great. If not, there are ways to get around that too. You could keep some wipes with you. I know Lunette makes cup wipes. So maybe you could look into those. Or you could just use some toilet paper to wipe it off. You could also bring a little 
water bottle with you to rinse it. You don't necessarily have to clean it, like scrub it down in a sink every time you change it if you're just needing to empty it and put it back in. You can totally still do that in a stall. Of course, it's going to be easier and more comfortable in the comfort of your own home or in a private restroom. You may be able to get away with never having to change it in public at all. So yeah, I think that addresses all of your specific questions that you had. If you have any other questions that I didn't cover, be sure to leave a comment and I will get back to you. Um, I can't wait to talk to you guys in the comments and hear your thoughts. Have you tried the salt cup? Have you tried any other menstrual cups? Which one works best for you? If you've had a different experience with this cup or other cups or you have a different type of period or a different body type. I'm sure that would also be helpful to anyone who maybe is different from me. So, because uh, I'm only one person. But I'm also going to leave some resources in the description box. Like I said, the put a cup in it and then there's also a YouTube channel. Her name is It's Just Kelly. She's done so many cup reviews and her videos are so helpful, so in-depth. She's totally unapologetic about sharing about these things and she's been really helpful to me as I've been kind of on this journey of trying cups. So shout out to her because I do credit her for helping me <laughs> feel more comfortable talking about this stuff too. That is all for today's video. Let me know if you'd like any more content on this topic. I don't plan on trying a ton more cups, at least not right now, but I'd be happy to do maybe like a Q&A in the future about just my low waist period journey because it has entailed a lot more than just cups. I've also used other types of products as well. So I think that's all for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I will talk to you very soon. Bye.